the core benefits of digital over analog is basically, I believe, it's the cost. Whether it's reproduction, whether it's production, any of these aspects, that's where the digital has an upper hand over analog. But having said this, analog always remains the full, uncompromised, complete uh, set of information. And we always need to remember this, that digital at its best can be better than analog. It's only approximation of analog. So the better the digital is, the closer to analog is it going to sound. So theoretically, the best possible digital is the one that you won't be able to hear the differences between analog and digital. The process of digitization is basically squaring out the analog round original set of data. The infinite set of data of information is being rationalized to some sort of bits and being represented as an approximation of the perfect complete set of information of analog. Um, everybody pretty much um, who read about the history of creation of digital, so that was a collaboration between, between Sony and Philips. When those, those uh, two companies started collaborating, they had some sort of miscommunication and that's a very well documented story. Sony basically went and created the format, the Red Book format. They created it to be in 16-bit depth. Whereas the Philips engineers, they were doing their own R&D, separate unit, and they thought that the 14-bit is the kind of the, the bit depth. And so the first DAC, the TDA 1540, was born, um, which was 14-bit. So since we have this discrepancy between the two companies, Sony and Philips, one has 16-bit, the other is 14-bit. Um, and what transpired is that from the perspective of the polycarbonate disc, the CD, 16-bit and you know was probably more optimum because that's what the explanation came from the Sony engineer. He said that 16 bits represents an equilibrium, an optimum between the three parameters of perceived dynamics between the low-level musical information and uh, the quantization noise that is the result of the digital to analog conversion. The 14 bits from the Philips engineers was also correct because they thought that it's more important to reduce the quantization noise at lower bit depth. We have less information, so lower low-level musical information that can be converted or to start off with. So the quantization noise is automatically lower because the 14 bits is lower set of information than 16 bit. But when we have lower quantization noise, we actually also gain something. That is the perception of dynamics. And not only theoretically, that's also, you know, we can perceive it, it's, it happens in practical terms. On top of that, when we go up in this higher res, and when I'm talking about PCM, I'm not talking noise shaping, so DSD, one big, one bit, uh, you know, that pink noise that we get. But I'm talking a real set of information, 24-bit PCM. What happens is if we go up above the 24-bit, the hardware starts becoming an issue. We can produce something so, so fine and so high resolving without having a limiting factor. Limiting factor here is the power supplies. So the noise flow of the power supplies limits how much the information we can present because the noise comes dominant over information. You know, the noise rejection of our power supplies can be only as good in the analog domain. We're still going to have ripple and that ripple we can't completely eliminate. And no matter how you start eliminating and how low it be becomes, it's still going to be a limiting factor to the bit depth. That, that leads us to this topic. Who needs all those bits if we can't reproduce them in the first place? Like with this power delivery that we had in the previous, in the previous videos. Who needs all the power, all this quantity, if we don't get it? It's great maybe for the uh, recording industry to store some data, to have, have a, uh, an abundance of data to start off with. That's a great thing. But that information, does it get really translated into the real analog world? So we take this digital and we convert the digital into analog. But the conversion 
is noisy. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is what we have. You know, we, we can't get perfect conversion. Nothing is being perfectly converted. That's why I was referring that we have nothing in this world is perfect and we have no perfect components. And the consumers are just believing they have higher S. They have higher quantization noise, lesser dynamics. When we were designing and creating all our DAX, the true benchmark for quality was always an analog source. When we listen to DAX and how everything sounds, we always benchmark it against vinyl or tape. In theory, if digital is great or approximates the analog at its best, then there shouldn't be any difference between digital and analog. They should sound exactly the same. For us, when we created our DAX, that was always the benchmark. Anal the only benchmark for digital is the analog. Many audiophiles and music lovers are tending to forget that. So when they compare digital <laughs> with digital and say how great digital is, they actually forget that all this digital was derived from analog in the first place. They can't possibly judge how great it's sounding without having the analog benchmark. If somebody is serious about judging how great something is, please compare it to a tape or to a, to a turntable. And there's a strong difference, there's a very st stark contrast between the digital filterless and the digitally filtered digital to analog conversion. Everything that is a digitally filtered never sounds as natural. It sounds always flatter. It sounds way more reduced in information with lesser dynamics than a digital filterless R2R deck optimized at 16 bits at its optimum. That is why all our DACs have the same character as an analog source would have. R to R type of DACs enables the digital filterless operation. The original recording is the reduced data set that we have in the first place. And we play it back without adding anything to it, without any manipulation of the digital domain. That ensures that we have maximum data integrity. It's 16 bits without any interpolation, we achieve the, the closest approximation to the analog. That's why our DACs, when you compare them to the analog signal, you won't hear much of a, a discrepancy. The sound, the character, the presentation is analog on our digital as analog is. I encourage anybody to compare a digital filterless R to R DAC of some sort of 16 bits, 14 bits, 18 bits, compare it to a, a Delta Sigma noise shaping DAC and just, just listen how the music is being presented. DSD, noise shaping, any type of modern DACs, they don't bring it. They have great specs. You know, this is the numbers game. It, that's the selling point. But that, those specs, those numbers, they don't translate into reality. That's like with this power delivery and power. We have the power, we can't deliver it. So why concentrate on all this power, those bits that we never get? Let's focus on those things that we have and optimize them. The analog quality or the approximation to that analog quality, this is what we're after. That's what really matters. That's why we design everything in, in, in order to achieve the maximum musical pleasure.